Hey, hey, hey. It's your girl, Country Lady, back in the building one more again. Heavenly Father, I come to you right now. Father God, I pray and thank you. And um, thank you for waking me up this morning, holding my right mind with the use of activity of my limbs, starting me on my way. I pray, God, that you forgive me for all the sins I have committed in your eyesight that was not pleasing and glorifying you, Father God. I repent, Father God, for all those sins of omission, commission, sins of transgression, sins zone, and unknown sin, sins seen and unseen, even in our conscious and unconscious mind. I thank you for forgiving us, God. I thank you for being a loving and forgiving Father. I thank you for showering us always with your unconditional agape love, Father God. And Father, as I truly decrease, Father God, on tonight you increase, Holy Ghost. And speak what you will have your people to digest, meditate on, ponder on, think on, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, in their spirit time, I declare and decree that it is so. It's already done. It's still in through by and with the precious blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Alright, so the night, I, I, I didn't even know what the title is today. Um, but I just, uh, I heard in my spirit, let the word do the work. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. I, I got like two chapters that I printed out today. But I asked the Holy Ghost to lead me and guide me in what scriptures to go to to give you guys on tonight. Um, when I say let the word do the work. So, uh, oh, disclaimer. Let me put this out there right now. Don't come for me because I ain't sending for you. Okay. Second of all, um, I'm trying to work with this light that I hear that's in my eyes and folks are, are are focusing on my eyeballs instead of focusing on the message that's coming out my mouth. Um, so I try to fix that. I still can see the light in my glasses. So I would pray that you would be focused on what I'm saying, what does say of the Lord through me and not what's on my eyeballs and not the light that's shining in my glasses um, from what I was, from what I was told, or what I've heard, um, the light makes me look like I have spirits in me, or I'm demonic, or something. Which the devil is a liar. So I'm just putting that out there. I'm doing the best with this light. If it's distracting to you, I don't know what to tell you. Put your little finger up and tip on off the loud. That's a, that's the best I can tell you. Um, but I'm going to do what does say the Lord, regardless of what people say or think of me. I'm going to do what God say. I have to obey God, and I fear God and God only. So, um, with that being said, I'm just going to let the word do the work. That's what the title say. So, that's what we're going to do tonight. So, because I, I couldn't, for the life of me, think of what scriptures. I always get my scriptures, and I like to copy and paste from, you know, my Bible way, and so I can have it in my hand. Um, and it is, by the way, in, it's in the Amplified Version, so it's a lot of good stuff in here. But I, I'm just, it's so much, with so much going on in the world today, I, I'm just like, God, you pick what you want me to speak on. You pick which scripture you want me to um, share with your people. But it's so much, it's so much, all of it is good, and all of it is needed, and, you know, but... Um, I think I just really want to go, um, let me find it here. This scripture is, let me see, I believe Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. I'm going to go there. That one sticks out to me. And that verse reads, that scripture reads, Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Any kingdom that is divided against itself is, is, being, laid, is being laid waste. And no city or house divided against itself will continue to stand. If Satan casts out Satan, that is his demons, he has become divided against himself and disunited, is what I think it say. How then will his kingdom stand? If I cast out the demons by the help of Beelzebub, which is Satan, by whom do your sons drive them out? For this reason, they will be your judges. Verse 28, but if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out the demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you before you expected it. Verse 29, or how can anyone go into a strong man's house and steal his property unless he first overpowers and ties up the strong man? 
then he will ransack and rob his house. So I, I went to that scripture because there's a lot going on in this world and a lot of people don't understand that demons are real. Spirits are real and we deal with that every day. And and don't don't matter that you are you are going to church, you are serving God. Sometimes Christians deal with demons and spirits too. We not Christians are not perfect. The the church is the hospital. That's where you go to get healed. That's where you go to receive your healing. That's where you go to receive your deliverance. That's where you go to be set free, saved, and and you know filled with the Holy Ghost. So it, it's not we not like we so high and mighty. I can't speak for nobody else, but I'm not high and mighty. I'm not holier than thou that I'm better than you or better than that person or I look better or I feel better than this person or I speak better than this person so that makes me way better than this person. No, I struggle with stuff too. Struggle with some demons too. I ain't going to sit here and lie to you. We all struggle with stuff. But that's why we go to church to get fed the word. We get strengthened. We get filled up with the Holy Ghost. We get filled with God's spirit. So that we can live and we can get through day to day. Every day in our daily lives. In our daily walk. So you need God. You need the Holy Ghost in you. Holy Ghost is the keeping power. That helps you to. When when you want to. When God is saying go right. You want to go left. That Holy Ghost is like. No but he said go right. That's the way you need to go. Not the way you want to go. See, we want to do what we want to do. Not what God say do. We want to live how we want to live. Not the way God said for us to live. It's God way or no way. Hey, Mom. Love you much. Good. I'm glad you can hear me. We um we can't do what we want to do. We we want to do what, what, what looks right, what seems right, what everybody else is doing. But that's why God called us to be set apart. To be different, to be set over here, and not try to fit in with the with the in crowd, with the a crowd. We have to be set apart. He created us to be set apart, to be different, to to live for Him, to do His will, not our will. But He does give us free will. He does give us our own choices. You know, give us the ability to make our own choices. But we need to like walk in God's way. Walk in, walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. We walk at we walk after the spirit and some and some lust after the flesh. The flesh will get you in trouble every time. The flesh wants what it wants, and I say this all the time. The flesh wants what it wants, and it's going to do whatever it needs to do to get what it wants. And it don't care how you feel about it. It wants you to give it what it wants. It's like um, I always use that movie Little Shop of Horrors, and that big plant be telling Seymour to feed it. He want more flesh. He want to eat more flesh. He want what he want. And he get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every time he feeding them. And he going out. First he was giving it, um, I don't know, what I forgot what he was giving it in the beginning. But as the movie go on, he start giving it people. He start cutting up people and giving it to the darn plant. Because the plant wanted more and wanted more. That Oh, blood. He was giving them blood. But that wasn't doing it. He wanted, he wanted more. He wanted meat. He wanted something to sink his teeth in. And that's how our flesh is. Our flesh wants us to give it what it wants. But that's not what we're supposed to do. It says in the word, put this flesh under subjection. You got to kill this flesh daily, every day. You got to deny yourself the pleasures that you want, the pleasures that you like. You got to deny yourself that stuff. What did God say? Uh, he said, take up your cross, pick up your cross and follow me. That means you can't live how you want to live. You got to live how Christ say live. You got to follow Christ. You got to follow after Christ. You got to do what Christ did. You got to walk, talk, sleep, drink, eat like Christ did. That's how I look at it. I don't know about nobody else. I can't speak for y'all. I can speak for me. But you heard, I read you from, I read you Matthew 12, verses 25 through 29. Again, it says, knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, he could hear what the Pharisees was thinking. They thought they was doing something by speaking within themselves, but Jesus could hear everything they was thinking. And he said, knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, any kingdom that is divided against itself is being laid waste. So when you divide, just, when you divide yourself against yourself, you being laid to waste. And he said, no city or house divided against itself will continue to stand. So if you divide it, if you're going against each other, you, you can't stand. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to happen. 
So people wonder why things don't work out because they're going to, they get, you can go against your own self. And you wonder why stuff don't work out for you because you're going against your own self. It say any any kingdom that is divided against itself is being laid waste. No city or house divided against itself will continue to stand. It can't stand. It won't work. Why do you think Satan always coming against us? He always trying to come in. What did he say? Still kill and destroy. He always trying to come in to kill, destroy whatever God has put in us. Everything that God put in us, the treasures, the gifts, the talents that's in us, that's laying in us. The enemy is coming for it. He's coming for everything God has placed in you. Everything God called you to be. What he called you to be. Who he called you to be. What he called you to say. And where he called you to go. The enemy is going to come to steal, kill, and destroy everything God called you to be. And what he made you to be. Because he don't want you to come for his kingdom of darkness. He don't want you to tear down the kingdom of darkness. The more souls you get, you lead to God. The more souls you bring to God. The enemy is mad. He, he is he teed off. That's, that's the best way I could put it. And he don't want you to do nothing. All the things that we do. Or used to do. I'm going to use me. All the stuff I used to do. I used to drink. I used to party. I used to go out. Be out all the time to the, the night. You know during the weekend sometimes. We would go party on the weekday. And, and we was having a good time doing that. But that was that's not the way we were supposed to live. That's because we was in we was in our sin. We was living in our sin and had blinds on our eyes and couldn't see what God wanted to see. But at a specific time, at a point in time, God is going to call you. He's going to call you back to Himself. He's going to reconcile you back to Himself. He's going to restore you back to Himself. And the enemy does not want that. The enemy got some soldiers out here that he is not trying to let go. He is holding on for dear life. If he can hold on to you for dear life, he, he won't let you. He know that you can't go and do what God wants you to do. He don't want you to do what God called you to do. He wants you to stay in darkness. He wants you to stay in sin. He wants you to stay in your mess. You stay in your mess. You can't do what God called you to do. As long as he can keep you distracted, stagnated, and, and looking the other way, you won't do what God has called you to do. The purpose that God placed you on this earth, you won't fulfill it. Because the enemy is trying to keep you distracted, trying to keep you looking one way. Don't want you to see or do nothing that God called you to do. That's why I, and it's another scripture on here. Hold on, let me, let me see what, what I want to read real quick. Because I, I was like, God, I don't know what to give the people tonight. Because I was reading both of these chapters and it, it was just like, let me go here. This, this is where I want to go. Let me, let me go here to this part. Um, where it's talking about the desire for signs. We won't believe unless we can see it. We want to see what God is talking about or what God is doing. We won't believe him or we won't have faith unless we can see the sign. No, you have to, when you serve in God, you got to believe first. You got to believe who he is and he is who he is. And you got to believe that he going to do what he say he going to do. And I know he going to do what he say he going to do because he said in his word, I'm a man that I cannot lie. Nor the son of man shall I repent. He also said in his word, Isaiah 55 and 11. He said, so, he said, the words that go forth out of my mouth shall not return to me void, but they shall accomplish that which it please, and it shall prosper real to the thing that I sent it. So if he's saying that he cannot, once he tell you something, once he make a promise to you, and he tell you he gonna, he gonna change your life around, or he gonna put you in a better house, or he gonna give you a better job, if he tell you he going to do that, that's what he going to do. He might not do it when you want him to do it. He might not do it in your timing because he's God. He's almighty. He's not going to do it in your timing. He's going to do it in his timing. And when he do it, you better know he's going to do it well. When he do it, it's going to be done right. Everything going to fall in place. Everything going to fall in line. But we got to do we got to do our part too. We got to do what God say do. We got to live how he wants us to live. We got to follow his commandments. So when he say, I'm going to do this in your life, or I'm going to do this or follow me, that's what he mean. These kids today are out of control. They don't have any respect for themselves. You, you, well, you're talking right there. You're talking right there. And that's why I always say we got to pray for the young people. 
We got to pray for our young people because the enemy, this is his playground. This is what he liked to this is what he liked to play in. This is where he liked to come in at and wreak havoc. And if he get your mind Baby, he got you. But God said, I still can save you. There's still hope. This is why my son died for it. This is what he died for. He died for your sins and everybody else. And he was he didn't know no sin. Jesus didn't know no sin. But he took on the sins of the world so that we can have life and have life more abundantly. But that's why we have to pray for our kids. We got to constantly be praying for our kids. I'm telling you. Because the enemy knows that's the next generation. That's the next generation of soldiers that God is uh, uh, looking upon to come after his dirt, his kingdom of darkness. And he do not want that. He is fighting tooth and nail. And he playing for keeps. He not playing no games. He don't care how he do it. Which way he come, who he use, he'll use the people closest to you to keep you distracted, to keep you from doing what God called you to do. I was tired tonight. I am tired tonight. I'm tired. I got my own stuff going on, but I have to still persevere. I have to still do what God said he do. Just because I got stuff going on don't mean I go over here and get in the corner, crawl up and ball up and cry, boo hoo hoo, woe is me. Why is this happening to me? No, I got to still do what God called me to do because the enemy don't want me to do it in the first place. So the devil is a liar. I will not bow down. I am not going to bow down. Bow down. I'm going to keep doing what God called me to do. So this is why I'm going to the desire for the signs people got to see something oh let me see it ain't true if i don't see it i don't like what did they say to doubting thomas he wanted to see and feel the scars in jesus hand he wanted to feel the the uh his side that was pierced he wanted to really make sure that this stuff happened before he would believe no that's not how you do it um hebrews 11 and 1 says um the um oh, let me get my scriptures right that they are worse than what we were going to... I call them the new batch. That's what I call them. I, I, I'm i calling them the new batch. I'm doing my live, man. What? I want to say something about... They need to leave the children alone, too, with all the stuff they don't want children. Let them be kids, because they are our future, and you mess up the kids, you mess up the future. That's what I want to say. Well, she's just saying that she just all she's saying is kids today are worse than when, when we was growing up. Kids the gate today got it worse than what we had. We could go out and we could play and we didn't have we didn't worry about or we didn't see all this stuff that's going on today. We didn't see that. We went outside, we played, we had a good time. And kids today got got cell phones, tablets, computers, games and all kinds of stuff. You they seeing stuff everywhere in school, every in their homes. It all, it all, I always remember hearing this when I was in school. It starts at home. Everything starts at home. You learn at home first. That's the first place where you learn. But the kids today is, is, there is, they don't have respect. You can't, you can't say nothing to them. You bet not say nothing to people's kids today. Oh, honey, you, you, you bet not. You, you might get your, you might get something knocked off or something. You can't say nothing to people. Get, you remember how they used to say it takes a village to raise, to raise kids? Not today, cause you bet not say nothing to nobody's kids. Cause honey, they ain't playing no more. But your kids can get away with doing what they're doing and being disrespectful and don't have respect for grown folks. We was taught you better have respect for your elders. You better speak when spoken to, and you don't say nothing out of turn. If not, not if we're not talking to you. You better not say nothing. You got kids that's all up in the grown folks conversation, having conversation with their mamas and their daddy and whoever. They kids are not kids no more. Kids are growing up just this phase. But I'm gonna go to this um, Matthew 12, 38, and it's crazy because Matthew 12 and 41. Let me see, 40 and 41 is tying into the other, last week when I was talking about. The Ninevites, when I was talking about God's anger against the Ninevites and why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, why my homeboy said, I'm going to take a detour and I'm running for the, I'm running for the boat. I'm going in the boat and I'm going to go to sleep. And, uh, yeah, that's what it's going to be. And that's what he thought because the word says God came, the word of God came to Jonah. Telling Jonah to go to Nineveh. Jonah was like, I think I'm dead. I'm not going to Nineveh. Dumb people is crazy. I don't want to go. They're not going to listen to nothing I say. And a lot of us feel like feel like that. When, when God wants us to tell people something, 
Or he got something for us to say to people. It could be our loved ones. It could be co-workers. It could be friends. It could be any. It could be a stranger. When he wants us to say something to people, we don't want to say it because, for me, I'm gonna speak for me. I'm gonna always speak for me. When you, when he tell me to tell somebody something, my first thing is like, Lord, now you know they ain't gonna believe me. God, you know they ain't gonna try to hear what I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm not no, uh, I'm not no apostle. I'm not a. Elder, I'm not a pastor. I'm not. I don't have any title for real, for real. I don't have any title, and and I always felt that like you know when you tell me tell them something, Lord, they ain't gonna listen. They ain't trying to hear that from me, cause to them in their eyes I'm a nobody, cause I don't preach. I don't. I don't do all this, and I don't have titles, and I don't this, and I'm not that. So I feel like people not gonna take what I say, but I still gotta get on here and say what says the Lord. I gotta say what He's telling me to say. So I'm gonna go here, twelve and thirty-eight. The desire for signs. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, "Teacher, we want to see a sign." They wanted him to perform a sign. They wanted him to do a miracle. So they, so what? You don't believe what I say? I gotta prove it to you. I gotta show you. It says a test of miracle. From you, pro proving that you are who you claim to be. Again, people want you to prove who you say you are these days. It's just like, okay, because of this pandemic, thank you, Holy Ghost, because of this pandemic, and everybody was getting all that money when the pandemic first happened, people that weren't supposed to get no money, no, they weren't supposed to get no money, but was telling them lies and was getting all that money, they got money out of unemployment. When this pandemic hit. So now when you go to get unemployment. Oh, you got to prove who you are. You got, to, you got to upload your documents. Your ID. Your social security card. And you got to upload, upload the front and the back. To prove who you are. Because other people. Was getting money that they had no business getting. So now you got to prove who you are. You got to wait on them. You got to deal with all this. and It's just it's crazy. But the Pharisees is telling Jesus, we want you to do something. We want you to, we want to see a sign. We want you to perform a miracle so we can make sure you are who you say you are. Because they don't believe what they see. They don't believe what he does or who he is and what he's saying out of his mouth. And Jesus is like, I ain't got to perform no sign for y'all to believe who I am. Okay, verse 39. But he replied and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation that is morally unfaithful to God, craves and demands a miraculous sign. Did you hear what he just said to them? He said, but he replied and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation. This is what he called them. This is what he's saying. This is what y'all doing. And you want me to prove who I am to you and all this that you're doing. Unfaithful, that is morally unfaithful to God, craves and demands a miraculous sign. But no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Okay, remember I was just talking about Jonah when, when God wanted him to go to Nineveh. And, and he wanted him to tell them they need to get their stuff together, repent, stop doing what you're doing, put down the evil, put down your knives and everything that you're doing. And Jonah was like, man, I don't want to go to Nineveh. I really don't fool with them people. Them people is crazy. They evil and they wicked, and I don't want I don't want no parts of them. Uh, so I'm going to take this de this good good detour, and I'm going to get on this boat with these other people, and I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to go to sleep. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh, and he did not want to tell them, prophesy, preach to them, and tell them what God told him to tell them, because he knew that. They wasn't going to listen. He, he's like, God, you always do this. You give them a chance. You give them grace. You give them mercy. And they turn around and go right back to what they was doing after you gave them a chance, after you forgiven them, after you let them live. And, you know, you didn't. they didn't fall in, your hand, in, their, in the hands of God when he was angry or they didn't feel his wrath. So verse 40 said, For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the well, well, it says the belly of the sea monster. So will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh. Let me get to my next page. The men of Nineveh will stand up as witnesses at the judgment against this generation. They will condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now something greater than Jonah is here. 
Verse 42, the queen of South Sheba will stand up as a witness at the judgment against this generation. See how they all stand, they stand in judgment against the generation. And God says, save yourself from this untoward generation. This generation today, man, they just... <laughs> Woo, you got to forever be praying. The word, what did the word tell us? Men are always to pray. Pray without ceasing. We got to pray for the young people. It's not just the young people. We got to pray for everybody. We got to pray for all of us. We got to pray for ourselves. Because sometimes we fall short of God's glory. We're not perfect. We, we, not, we, we just striving to be perfect. But we're not perfect. And we all mess up from time to time. I, I mean, you could be the squeakiest, cleanest person that, you know, that don't hardly do nothing wrong. But you still don't know how you sin, when you may sin. So that's why I always say when I ask God to, re when I ask God to forgive me, when I'm repenting, I'm saying even sins that I may have committed in my conscious and unconscious mind. Because we don't know when we sin. We could say something wrong and, and sin. We don't know. That's why he said we fall short of his glory. Every day. That's why we have to repent daily. That's why we have to ask God to always. To continually create in us a clean heart. And renew within us the right spirit. We got to ask God to help us to keep humble. Stay humble. Be humble. Even when we, we're being done wrong. We still got to be humble. We still got to remain humble. Everybody say oh I'm not turning the other cheek. Because Jesus said he turned the other cheek. And if they did something else. He turned his other cheek. Or he'll do whatever he need to do. But we as people say I'm not turning the other cheek. They not getting away with that. I I I, I got to do this and I got to do that. And I'm I'm not letting them do this and I'm not letting them get away with this. And they ain't treating me this way and they ain't talking. No, man, cut it out. Sometimes you got to take it. You got to humble yourself. Shut your mouth and take it and let God do in you what he's trying to do. Let God clean you up, clean you out like he's trying to do. He cannot use no mess. He cannot deal with no mess. You got to be clean. You got to be pure before God so he can use you to get the glory out of your story. Everything that we go through is not for us. It's for the ones that he specifically has for us to minister to. We have to minister to the people. But we can't minister to people if we are mess and we stinking and smelling like garbage inside. We got to get all that mess cleaned out. Like you got a fish, he got us. He cleaned all that sin and all that, all that filth that we do and all the stuff that we put inside of us. God can't use us like that. He not going to do it. He don't dwell in no mess. He don't dwell in the unclean temple. He just not going to do it. So, uh, where was I? Um, oh, the queen of the south. Sheba will stand up as a witness at the judgment against this generation and will condemn it because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. And now something greater than Solomon is here. And um, I believe you're talking about Christ. And so, but this, this right here, verse 40, verses 43 through 45 is what got me when I was reading it. Okay. Because it's been a minute. When I when I got out of the nursing home, when I came out of the nursing home, that's right, vengeance is mine. I'll do the repay, it says the Lord. We're not supposed to get vengeance. We're not supposed to take revenge. He said, I'll do it. And when I do it, you will know. You might not be around that person or around whatever, but when I do it, you will get word. But this right here, this what this what gets me and people don't understand. A lot of this is going on today. A lot it was going back it was going on back in the Bible days, but it's really, really, really like going on today. And um verse forty three says, Now when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, it roams through waterless, dry, arid places in search of rest, but it does not find it. Verse forty four says, Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it arrives, it finds the place unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Verse 45, then it goes and brings, th this is the kicker right here. Verse 45, then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits, more wicked than itself. And they go in and make their home there. And the last condition of that man becomes worse than the first. So it will also be with 
his wick with this wicked generation. So so when the spirit the the spirit that's dwelling in us and in, in some of us or who however many of us when that spirit is dwelling in us and it leaves, say we, we go and we get filled with the Holy Ghost and we say it and we praise it and we pray it and we and we're giving God all the glory, honor, praise and worship due unto him and, and we're going to church constantly and we you know we, we're feeling better about ourselves and we loving on God. That spirit is like it got to go. And so when it leaves, it's like, uh, no, nah, I, I, I'm coming back to where I was living at. Uh, no, nah, you ain't get, you ain't getting away that easily. I'm gonna come back, but when I come back, I'm bringing seven more wicked spirits, wicked in me. I'm coming back with seven more. That's ten times worse as me. And when they come, they come in the state. They ain't coming to leave. And it's going to make that person more wicked than they ever was. I mean, they're going to do stuff that you 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 would turn your head to the side. You remember the song that say things that make you go, hmm. Well, them spirits, when they come back seven times worse than the one that was already there, you they doing things that you turn your head like, really? Are they really doing that? And even now, we can't even be surprised about what's going on. We can't even, what's going on out here in this world? You shouldn't even be surprised because you know we live in the last and evil days. We already know what time it is. We already know that Christ is soon to come back. So all this stuff they're doing, it, it shouldn't even take you by surprise. It, it should not. I, I'm saying it shouldn't. It should not take you by surprise. The things that even your own children do, your spouse, your, your loved ones, your cousins, your auntie, whoever, co-workers, bosses, should not surprise you. Because this is the time that we're living in. This is the days that we're living in. And that's why he's saying that we are always to pray. Men are always to pray. Pray without ceasing because prayer changes people. People change things. We got to pray. We got to really get down. This is why I'm saying we got to bring the old school back. I, I wasn't brought up in church. I know that I had family that was in church. But I wasn't necessarily brought up in church myself. But I know the old school. I know that they used to go in that church. And they used to have shut-ins. And they used to get on their face. And they used to call on God. And they used to pray. And they used to cry out. We don't do all that stuff. When we had the old mothers. I'm talking about the mothers that didn't play with you. You come up in there with skirt wig. A couple inches above your knees. Oh baby you better sit down and get the little wrap. And cover yourself up. Or you know you didn't get you didn't get to do nothing. If you was out of order, you didn't get to do anything. They set you down. You did not get to do anything until you got yourself together. The old school way need to come back. Remember how when we was coming up in school, I, don't, I can't again I can't speak for y'all, but I can speak for me. When we was coming up in school, you got in trouble. You got that yardstick. You did something wrong. You got that yardstick crossed your behind. They, they was got, they was given permission from your parents that if you acted up in school, you're going to get it. Or if you're around the neighborhood and your neighbors are seeing you act up, you're going to get it. You're going to get it from them and then you're going to get it from your mom and your daddy. So you got a total of three beacons, honey. You, you got it. I, well, I, again, I can speak for me. I got in trouble. I, no. What you doing? And uh, oh, come here. And I got it from the neighbor. And then when my mama got, got it from her too. We, they didn't play with you back then. The, these kids today get away with a lot. They get away with a lot. What did the word say? You spare the, you spare the ride. You spoil the child. So God is saying, discipline your children. He ain't saying beat the stew out of them. He ain't saying abuse them. But he's saying discipline them. You can discipline them without trying to kill them. You can spank their behinds or however you choose to discipline yours. I know how I discipline mine. <laughs> they know too. So I, I didn't, they didn't play with me. I didn't play with mine. That, that was the way I knew. If my mom didn't play with me, my dad didn't play with me, grandparents didn't play, I remember the switches. I don't know about y'all, but I remember the switches. Go get them switches, plant them things up, and tear your height up, honey. That's what I remember. But the kids today, they don't get that. And then the kids today, parents think that because you give them stuff. you Oh, let me give them a cell phone. Oh, let me give them this. Let me buy them this. And let me do this for them. Let me do this for them. And, 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 and get them out their hair. Parents do, uh, parents do that too. That's not love. 
That is not love. Your kids want love. They want hugs. They want you, I love you. They want you to play with them. They want you to show it, display it. Don't give them things. That's why I have these kids running around here making bombs and stuff and doing this and doing that. Because they ain't getting the love that they want. They're not getting the love that they need. God, what did God say? He is love. We are to love each other. We are to love one to another. That's a commandment, baby. Love one to another. And this is what this world is lacking love. Is I did a um I did a podcast and I said what the world needs now is love. That podcast got a lot of listeners, a lot of people listen to that podcast. And I'm just coming from my heart. What I see is we need love. We don't have love anymore. I, I tell you like this, what was Phil what was Philadelphia uh known for? Philadelphia was called the city of brotherly love. Where's the love? There ain't no love there. People running around hurting each other. There is no love there anymore. There's, the love is lost. What does the song say? Where is the love? The, the love is gone. The love is lost. We don't have love for each other. What we do is we got hate. We have envy. We jealous of one another. The word says men is um um men become lovers of themselves. They not they don't even fear God anymore. There's no fear in God. They they just don't. They just don't. They call it wrong, right, right, wrong, and, and everything. They just doing everything out in the open. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. Anytime they turn around, they got a Bible called Queen James with a rainbow on it. Come on here now. You making a mockery of God. You making a mockery of His word. You don't do that. You don't play with God. You don't play with God. It's not wise to fall in the hands of an angry God. You don't want to feel the wrath of God. I'm telling you, God, He been through. He but He still keeps trying to give us chance after chance, grace and mercy every day. But He been through with what we down here doing. What's going on down here in this world? All this wicked and evil, vile stuff that's being done, and and and, and what's being done to our kids. The stuff that's being done and the laws they trying to make that you could do this, this and that to a child. Anytime they're coming out with a TV show called Little Demon, you know what time it is. Little Demon, are you for real? And these kids going to be watching that stuff. That poison going to be going to their kids. I wish I would. I, Lord, I thank you. Minds are grown. I wish I would catch a kid of mine watching something called some. I wish I would let it be playing in my house. Some Little Demon. Come on now. Y'all got so much these little kids is learning. You got little kids who dressing like they grown or they round here twerking their little tails. Boy, I wish. I, I wish. Twerk, twerk something. I, I got the belt that's going to twerk right along with you, boo. I'm not playing with you. I, the kids should not be able to do what they're doing. They're not being kids anymore. Their childhood is being snatched away from them. They're growing up too fast. They, I mean, like that. So, um, Jesus Christ, I, I, I just went on. That, that right there, when he, when this, this scripture was talking about that spirit leaving and he coming back looking for a place that's unoccupied, and uh, mom don't laugh at me <laughs> when, he, when he said this that he was coming back he finds the place unoccupied sweat in other words it's clean it it it, it he want to invade that house he want to invade us if if it's clean oh i'm coming back i'm gonna go get my homies and we're gonna come back and we just gonna have a good time up in here but we that's when we got the fight that's when we got to pray for each other. That's when we got to pray each other through. We should be able to call each other, call on one another. And sis, I need to pray. Brother, I need to pray. Pray for me. I'm always saying, pray for me. I need y'all to pray for me because I'll be going through some stuff. I, I mean, it's like every hand, I'm going through something. But I will not bow down to the enemy. I will not bow down to what he want me to do. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to push. I'm going to pray until something happens happens i'm going to keep moving and the things of god not picking up the cares of this world because when you pick up the cares of this world it don't do nothing but jack you up he said cast your cares upon me for i care for you lay your burdens down at my feet take my burden take my yoke my yoke is easy and my burden is light let me take yours let give me yours give me your cares i can deal with yours better than you can let me take it let me help you let me give you peace 
He said, let me give you peace that surpasses all understanding. He said, if you keep your mind on those that keep their mind stayed on me, I will keep you in perfect peace. But we got to keep our mind stayed on God. I mean, today was not a good day. Today was, uh, I said, a day from hell. And that's how I felt. I'm being honest with y'all. That's how it felt today. From the time I got to work to the time I came home. And the devil is a liar wonder. I'm saying he did not want me to do this live. I said I'm still going to do it. I was on this couch falling asleep before I got on here. I said oh nope let me get up. And let me do what God told me to do. And that's what I'm doing. And the more, everything that you say or do for God. When you talk about God. Like I'm on here talking to y'all tonight. What is, what's going to happen? It's going to come back at me. He going to come. He going to attack. He going to do it. And, and everything I'm saying to y'all, that's what he do. When we talk for God, when we speak for God, you got those that preach. When they preach, you know, that's why we got to stay prayed up. That's why we got to fast. That's why we got to be, you know, focused. We got to be intentional. As my girl, Minister Marshall, say, intentional. You got to be intentional about being uh, um, for your about being about your father's business, you gotta be intentional. You gotta be intentional about getting in that word. You gotta be intentional about praying. You gotta be intentional about fasting. You just got to be intentional about doing what God called you to do. Do what God called you to do. Say what He called you to say. Be who He called you to be, and go wherever He called you to go. We got to be intentional. Intentional. I'm telling you, I looked up something. I forgot. I forgot to put the dag on. Um. The dad going, um, that's what I was going to say. Separation. Come from among them and be separated. It is time to come from among those ones that don't want to do nothing, don't want to serve God, don't want to hear you talking about. He said, come from among them and be separated. Mm -mm -mm. Good God Almighty, have mercy, Jesus. I'm telling y'all. Woo. I, I'm just, I'm just, I didn't know what I was going to say to y'all tonight. I didn't know which way to go, which way to come from. I just said, God, I'm putting it in your hands. When I open up this thing, you call them out because you created it, Jesus. When I open this thing up, you have to fill it. You have to fill it. I'm going to go and do what you say do, but I'm going to need you to fill it. I got to pray before I get on here. I pray when I get on here. I pray when I do, when I get on my wisdom app, I pray. And I ask God, you know, decrease me and increase the Holy Spirit and say, and bring forth what you need your people to meditate on, ponder on, digest, eat up, drink up, however you want them to do it. I need you to do it. We need transformation and revelation from your word. And God, I need you to do just that. So that's why I had all these scriptures. And um, it's just, I'm going to skip over. Um, yeah, I'm gonna skip over to, oh no, let me read this one. I, I gotta read this one. I was gonna skip this, but I'm, let me go back. Change relationships, right? Verses 46 to 50, um, still in, still in Matthew 12, verse 46 to 50. He says, while he was still talking to the crowds, it happened that his mother and brothers stood outside. Asking to speak to him, verse 47 says, Someone said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside asking to speak to you. Verse 48, But Jesus replied to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? Verse 49 says, And stretching out his hand towards, toward his disciples and all his other followers, he said, Here are my mother and my brother. 54 Whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven by believing in me and following me is my mother, I mean, is my brother, my sister, and my mother. So in other words, he said, if you're not following the will of God, if you're not following the will of his Father and believe in him and following him, you're not his, you're not his family, you're not his kin, you're not his mom, you're not his brothers, you're not nobody. But those that are following the will of God and believing in Christ and following Christ, that's who his mother, his brother, and his sisters is. That Those are all his mother brothers. I was like, wow, I had to read that. And like really, I was up late trying to read my word 
And when I came across that, I was like, oh, wow. So you say it, if we don't follow your will, then we're not, we're not your relate. We're not your kin, as they say. We're not related to you. We're not your kinsmen. We're not your family members. If we're not following the will of God and believing in you and following you. I thought that was just like, wow. That just, just spoke to me. Now, this part right here about these parables, I, I kind of stuck on these parables because before it was broke down to me at my church, I really, I kind of understood, but I didn't understand. Okay, like for instance, the parable of the seed and the sower. When they was talking about the seed, I must say this all the time because it, it really had me messed up for a minute. When they was talking about the seed, I automatically thought money because when you like ten people services or you get on Facebook and you be on people's lives and they always say so a seed, so a seed, so a seed, so a seed. So I'm thinking that's that means money. A seed means money. But a seed when he's talking about sowing the seed, he's talking about sowing the word of God. And so when 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 um Prophetess Becky did that that um Bible study and she broke that thing down and she had us do it for homework that's when it i got oh let me put my little scarf there y'all ain't telling me my scarf sliding up. um but when she when she broke that thing down that's when i got it and it was like oh i'm thinking about something totally different i really wasn't getting this word until it, that's why bible study is so important that's why bible study is so pertinent that you that you get that you go to Bible study and you, you be taught. I mean, you get taught the word on Sunday, but when you do Bible study, you get more more in depth about the word. You you being taught more about the word. So anyway, um, I'm going to go here. Hold on. Let me go back for a minute. It says Jesus teaches in parables. And I didn't even for, for you know, when I first started reading the word, I didn't know what that was. You know, it takes a while that you have to keep reading and you have to keep studying and you have to, you know, ask for help, ask questions. I mean, I, I, I see my sister on here. She she taught she taught me a lot of stuff, helped me out with a lot of stuff, explained a lot of stuff to me that I didn't understand, didn't know. And that's why it's good that you can have um those ones that you can go to and ask and get that knowledge because what the words say my people perish for a lack of knowledge it's a lot of stuff that we don't know it's a lot of stuff that we're not knowledgeable about or knowledgeable of and that's why we we you know we lack because we don't know and that's why he said that so that's why he give us the word that we can study so we can gain knowledge we can gain relatively knowledge and wisdom and stuff that's why it's it's like when my sister says sometimes when you're trying to get in your word and you can't, you got to force yourself. You got to pick up that word and you just got to go. You got to ask God what you, what I, I always say, God, make it plain, make it clear to me. I, if you got to take me back to first grade, get set kindergarten to make it clear, make it plain, then do what you got to do because I need to understand your word. I need to understand what it's saying and how can I share it with somebody else. If I don't understand what it's saying. So I need the understanding. I need the knowledge. I need the wisdom. I need the revelatory or the revelation of your word. I just, I need you to get, I need it. I want it to be poured down into me. I want it to be like I'm a sponge and I'm soaking up everything that concerns God. That I can share with other people because I like to share. So if I can learn his word that I can share with others so they know. So people can't say, oh, I didn't know. Oh, nobody told me that. You can't say that in this day and age because we got what? Technology. And God is everywhere, right? Right. He's everywhere. Everybody's preaching and teaching and talking about God. Now, I ain't saying everybody preaching right. I ain't saying everybody teaching sound doctrine. You got the, That's why I said you got to study to show that self approved A workman not need to be ashamed right and divine the word of truth. You got to study his word to know it for yourself. You can't just take what everybody say. And you can't eat at everybody's table either. You just can't do it because you don't know what you're eating. You don't know if it's good or bad. You don't know if it's some poison up in there. You don't know. Nothing. No, you can't eat at everybody's table. That's why you have to have discernment. So let me go. Let me just go jumping in this. All right. So I'm on. Thir I'm on um, chapter 13. I didn't even realize. <clears throat> Y'all got excuse my voice. I'm still getting over. Still getting over that um, viral 
upper respiratory infection, better known as a cold. So you got to excuse my voice and then I get excited so my voice is going like, you know. Anyway, so chapter 13. <coughs> Let me see if this is what I want to read. Okay, so chapter 13, verse 1. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and was sitting beside the sea of Galilee. Verse 2. But such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, positioning himself as a teacher, while the whole crowd stood on the shore. So, he about to tell the crowds, and he about to teach them, you know, using the parable. And can y'all... Y'all don't see the light in my glass. I still see it, but it ain't there all the way. It ain't like it was before because I had that light so close up on me. You, it's right here in my glasses. But anyway, that's neither here or there. Um, so he about to explain to them in the parables. And the parables is so they, he teaching the, he's speaking to the crowd. But the disciples, they want to know why you teaching us in a parable. Because he said, he that have ears, let him hear. And he that have eyes, let him see. But what he mean is, we can't see, we can't tell what he's talking about because we're not really there with him, like all the way there. And I don't mean by, like physically. I'm talking about spiritually. We're not spiritually there. That's why he's teaching in parables. But if we're spiritually there, we'll get what he's saying. We'll catch the meaning of what he's saying. So uh, that's that's how I'm getting it. So I could be wrong, y'all. Let me know. But that's what that's where I'm. That's what I get. So anyway, um, verse three says he told them many things in a, in parables, saying, "Listen carefully. A sower went out to sow seed in his field, and as the so as he sowed, some seed fell by the road, the wayside." This is in this is in um, amplified. So it's it's in King James is by the wayside between the fields and the birds ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And how Prophet Becky put us put it to us was the soil is our heart. And so when he sowed the seed, which is the word, the seed is the word, if you don't have um your heart is the soil. And if your heart don't take this word in, then it won't it won't dwell in you. It won't dwell in you, and it won't begin to work in you and change you from the inside out. Um, so that's what to me when I when I see soil, that's what I think of my heart um, and how I took the word in and what I did with the word when the word was given to me or when the word was spoken or taught. How do how do I what do I do with that word in my heart? Do I let it change me, or do I let it just don't don't let it stick? It don't stick. It don't take. Like how a bad perm don't take. The, if you don't let the word in and let the word do it, the, designed to do, it won't take. It won't work. You'll still be the same old you. You won't be a new. You won't be a new creature. So um. So wait. Other seed fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and at once. They sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But then, but when the sun rose, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they had no root, y'all, they withered away. Verse 7, other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them, choked them out. It choked the word out, which, in other words, the enemy, it choked the word, he choked the word out of them. So that they can't become new people, they can't become new creatures, and they can't, you know, serve God and do what God called them to do and worship and praise God. So he choked the word right on out of them, and they go right back to doing what they were doing and being who they were, who they was before, you know, they come to Christ. Other seed, oh, I felt I said that choked the word, choked it, choked them out. Eight other seed fell on good soil and yielded grain, some a hundred times as much as was sown. Some sixty times as much, and some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. So even even on good ground, as my, um, one of my one of the ministers put when he was preaching one Sunday, even though you it has good ground, the seed fall on good ground, there's still one percent of weed. And what does weed do? It try to kill. It kills the. It kills the um seed. So even though we have good ground, where the, the seed fall on good ground, you still have 1% of weed, and the weed will try to kill the seed. 
So, and you heard what I've said this earlier. He who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. So if he, he's telling us to hear, if we got ears, hear what he is saying to us. Take it in, meditate on it, dwell on it, ponder on it, die, let it digest in our spirit, man. You know, we can read the Bible and, and at first, in the beginning, when I started reading, I didn't understand nothing they were saying. But my spirit, man, hungered and thirsted because it hurt, it understood what the word was saying. It, I, my spiritual, my natural mind wasn't there yet, but my spiritual man could understand what I was reading, although I couldn't uh, mentally understand in my mind what the word was saying but he said he who has ears to hear let him hear and heed my words if you don't hear his words man you you're in trouble you got to hear you got to understand you got to ask god for clarity understanding of his word so that you can do the word is for us to take it in and, and apply it to our lives on a daily basis that's what the word of god is for we have to do what the words say do not just read it and put it to the corner and let it collect dust. No, we have to read it. And it's just not a one-time thing. Uh, uh, sometimes they really need to be reading all the time. Um, I usually take my Bible out at night when it's quiet and I read something or I open my book. Like my sis had me do, I open the book. I, I'll open the book first, pray over it, then open the book to where God want me to go. And wherever my eyes land... I read that chapter and the two chapters before and pick out the things that, that stand out to me or that God highlights to me to to um, think on, to ponder on, to, you know, meditate. So th that's that's what we that's what he's saying. You know, we got to heed his word. We got to apply his word to our life every day. Not some days, not the days we feel like it, not choosing certain days, but all the time. We really got to do this. We this is something that you got to practice. That you got to get yourself in the habit of doing um, every day. Cause I'm telling you, if you go out of here, un, if you ain't dressed right, I ain't talking about your natural clothes. I'm talking about the whole armor of God. If you don't go out here dressed right, mean that whatever comes at you is gonna come. Cause you don't have your clothes on. You don't have your your gear on. And, and and that's something that I have to practice with. I I, I got to practice with putting my whole armor on every day. Because I'm telling you, even even you we put the whole armor on, he's still going to come at us no matter what. He's still, the enemy is going to come at us with everything he got. He is not playing. He's not playing no games. He, play, he ain't playing. He playing for keeps because he know his time is soon to come. It's soon ended. His time is winding up. So he's trying to take everybody he can take. That's why he, he flunk, you know, the enemy's devices, you know, whatever it is that you like, whatever it is you like doing. Um, when I was out there, I wasn't a real big drinker. I, I didn't I couldn't drink like that, you know, excuse me for my eyes. But um drinking, partying, hanging with my friends and stuff like that. All that stuff is is designed to keep you keep you stuck, keep you stagnated, keep you distracted. So you won't find what God what it is God wants you to do. How so you won't know that God truly loves you. And he, he has unconditional love for us. He agape love. He wants the best for us. He wants to give us the best. But God said, I can't do all that if you still want to wallow in your mess. If you still want to go in that pig pen, stay in that pig pen and eat that slop all the time. I can't do what I want to do for you until you come to yourself, till you come out of that mess, till you come up and out of it. When you tired, when you tired, there ain't no demon, the devil, witch, and hell that can keep you from coming about that mess and doing what God called you to do. Get your life together, get your life straight, and get and get right with God. That song says, "Get right with God and do it now." We don't have time to play. We don't have time to waste. It's time out for playing church. It's time out with playing with church. It's time out with playing with God. Uh, giving him them jailhouse promises. It's time out for all that stuff. He is tired and he done with all that. We got we got to get it together. We got to get it right. We got to get right with him. We got to get our lives. And our lives never belonged to us in the first place. We were bought with a price. Every last single one of us. And nobody different. Nobody exempt. Nobody excluded. Enough is enough. 
of the excuses. Listen, I I listen, I got to step on my own toes. And when I'm talking to y'all, I'm talking to myself. Okay? I'm talking to myself. A lot of things that I went through this year, I I believe I believe a lot of things that I went through this year, I brought on myself cuz I wasn't walking in, in in obedience i was walking in disobedience so a lot of things that i went through this year i feel like i brought on myself and some was a text from the enemy but regardless i'm still here god kept me here he saw fit to keep me in the land of the living because i still got work to do for him i, I have a lot of work to do for him and i can't do the work if i don't get myself right if i don't get myself together i can't do the work and I still got to come unto God and be real and be honest with him about whatever area I may struggle in. Whatever area I might be struggling with, I got to be real with God and real with myself. And and I had stopped Facebook because I said, oh, I got to get myself together. How long ago was that? And then if, for, if I want to be real, if I want to be honest, when I did that, I felt like, oh, hell broke loose. Because I stopped doing what I was supposed to have been doing from the beginning. So I feel like, oh, hell broke loose in my life when I stopped doing that. When I took it upon myself, oh, who am I to be telling anybody anything? Oh, I'm going to get off Facebook. Let me get myself together. And I, every day go by, the days go by. And I'm talking about, oh, I got to get myself together. I get back on there when I get myself together. That's like people saying, oh, I go to church when I get myself together, when I get myself right. Well, if you keep using that excuse, you'll, it'll never happen. You'll never get yourself right. You'll never get yourself together. You'll just, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to do it next week. Oh, I'm going to do that next month. Let me just, let me get this month to get myself right and get myself together and, and come to God. No, come to God as you are and let God help you get yourself together. Let God help you get yourself right. Follow God, follow after Christ, and let Him get you right. Let Him shed all that stuff off of you, clean you up and clean you out. Clean all that garbage out, all that funk and vile and stuff out of you that's in you. Get you. God got to clean you out. He got to clean you up and out. And it's nothing wrong with going on that pot, on going on that wheel, going back on the potter's wheel and let the potter mold you, shape you back to the way you need to be where he wants you to be in him we all got work to do y'all we all got a purpose we all got a calling we all have an anointing in our life but we got to come unto god we got to surrender all we got to surrender everything our kids our mates uh jobs uh family whatever it is we got to surrender it all throw your hands up god i surrender but when you do it you better mean it don't play with God. He is not to be played with. He is not to be mocked. So when you say, I surrender, God, God, I truly surrender all. Be prepared for what he's going to do in your life. Just be prepared. Be ready. Be prepared. Study that word. Get in that word. Because Lord knows I, I'm getting there. I'm not like I was in the beginning. But I'm getting there. Every day I got to do it. I got to choose to do it. What is it What is it that they say? You got to you gotta choose to do something different to get, to get a different result. I think I said it right. Paraphrasing. I don't know. But you, you got to do something different. You got to. So um, I, I just jumped off of what I, where I was at. Um, Holy Ghost have your way. Where was I? Oh, that's where I was at the end of that. So then, verse 10 says, Then the disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the crowds in parables? Jesus replied to them, To you it has been granted, granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been granted. That's why he's speaking parables. Because it's not been granted to us. Not yet, anyway. Um, it has not been granted. granted. But to them, it has not been granted. For whoever has spiritual wisdom, because he is receptive to God's word, to him more will be given. So did y'all catch that? It says, for whoever has spiritual wisdom... Because he is receptive to God's word, to him more will be given, and he will be richly and abundantly supplied. 
But whoever does not have spiritual wisdom, because he has devalued God's word, devalued God's word, even what he has will be taken away from him. So whatever you do have, whatever you do know, or whatever you can grasp um, in his in God, if you divide his word, if you don't listen to his word, if you disregard what his word is saying, whatever you do have, he's going to take that from you. And he can do that. And that reminds me of the scripture that says that God will turn you over to a reprobate mind. If you want to do your own thing, live your own way, do what you want to do because it's your prerogative and you want do and you don't want nobody telling you what to do then he'll turn you over to a reprobate mind you'll be you'll think what you're doing is right and it's not it's just all kind of wrong and all kind of messed up so man I'm telling you this is this is good right here I'm telling you verse 13 this is the reason I speak to the crowds in parables because while having the power of Seeing they do not see, and while having the power of hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand and grasp spiritual things. In them, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, So he's like, We have ears and eyes to see and hear, but we don't really truly see and hear what it is he's saying and what it is he's teaching and explaining to us. So, it this, this is just some good stuff, and I never seen it like this before. But God is really doing what he said he would do. God is doing a new thing. And I thank God for what he's doing in my life. You know. Um, so it said. And the prop, verse 14 says. In them the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. Which says you will hear and keep on hearing. But never understand. So we can hear the word. Like I said in the beginning when I first was reading it. I was reading it. I was reading the Bible like it was just a regular old book, and it's not a regular old book. And so that's where that takes me at when he said, you will hear and keep on hearing, but never understand. So, and you will look and keep on looking, but never comprehend. So we really got to study the word, break the word down, like how my sis showed me how to do it. Um, you know, just highlight the things that God is um, that God is um, highlighting to me that he is having jump out to me or speak to me the word that's the words that speak to me or if it's even words that I need to um, 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 I'm sorry if it's words that I need to look up the diction the, um, the definition to I can highlight the words and I did that in my Bible too and never went back and looked those words up but I'm gonna I'm look those words up too um, verse 15 for this nation's heart has grown hard, and with their ears they hardly hear, and they have tightly closed their eyes. Otherwise they would see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn to me, and I would heal them spiritually. So, I mean, the, the, the word is telling you, he's telling you what he wants you to do, what he needs us to do, what we need to do. Um, I'm sorry, I'm messing with this thing. Sorry, y'all. Whoo! Glory to God. I'm gonna read a little bit more, and then I'm gonna um, I'm a, oh, I gotta get to that other page. Hold on. Um, so verse 16 says, "But blessed, spiritually aware and favored by God are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. I assure you, and most solemnly say to you." Many prophets and righteous men who were honorable and in and, and, and right standing with God longed to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Did y'all hear that part? He said many prophets and righteous men who were honorable and in right standing with God longed to see what you see. So even even some prophets and righteous men don't see what what God is trying to get us to see or what some of us can see they don't see even though they prophets or righteous men so it is it, to me it's saying it doesn't really matter um, what your title is uh, what they call them accolades or what your what, who you are if you don't if you don't have that ability to see if you don't really truly study this word and break it down and see what God is saying then you won't see no matter who you are, what your title is. It don't really matter. 
So here's where the, the here's the explanation of the sower. This is what that parable was talking about. Listen, verse 18. Listen then to the meaning of the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom regarding salvation and does not understand and grasp it, the evil one comes and snatches away what what was sown in his heart. This is the one this is the one on whom seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom seed was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and at once welcomes it with joy. 21 says, yet he has no substantial root in himself, but it's only temporary. So the word is only in him temporary because he don't have any root. There's no word that's like down deep inside his spirit, meaning there's no word down. It's not been in there and it's not set long enough to me what it's saying so it it just leaves it. it's, te it's only temporarily there he only knows that word and has that joy temporarily and when let me get to my next page and when pressure or persecution comes because of the word immediately he stumbles and falls away abandoning the one who is the source of salvation verse 22 and the one on whom seed was sown among thorns this is the one who hears the word but the worries and distractions of the world and the deceitfulness the superficial pleasures and delight of riches choke the word and it yields no fruit so it chokes the word out of him so there's no fruit you can't the word says you will know them by their fruit and this is telling you that the, the thorns it chokes it out of them the distractions and the worries of the world, deceitfulness, all that chokes the world out of that, that um, believer or that person. The superficial pleasures and delight of riches choke the word and it yields no fruit. Verse 23, and the one on whom seed was sown on the, on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands and grasps it. He indeed bears fruit and yields some a hundred times as much as was sown, some sixty times as much, and some thirty. So, the, the, when it falls on good ground, he he absorbs that word. He takes that word, and he hungry, he thirsty. He he breaks that word down. He finds out what it means, and he and he can you know bear his fruit. He's then growing fruit inside. That word is the fruit. When you got that word in you, when you really got the word in you, you'll bear fruit. You'll bear good fruit. Because if you're if you're on a good tree and you and you good fruit, then people will know. But a bad tree can't yield good fruit, and a good tree can't yield bad fruit. Just can't do it. It's it's not it's not gonna happen. So I'm gonna read this last part, and then I'm gonna be done. Let me see some. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm gonna be done about that time. So this part right here, weeds among wheat, which really is the wheat and the tares and we we was learning about that parable too that parable right there you that's some good stuff man you you really need to read these and really you need to ponder on the parables because i'm telling you it's deep how jesus teaches through these parables and it's it's quite a few parables too so it would it would be a good idea to read this parab all the parables like study them one at a time and, and just get it in your spirit man just learn it, teach, I'm uh, not teach, learn it and share it with other people that don't know. That's what we're supposed to do. It says we're supposed to, we was the disciples, we're disciples and we're supposed to disciple other people. We're supposed to make disciples out of other people. But we got to do it right and we got to be right. We, we got to be right first before we can disciple somebody else. We need to know this word and we need to live it, eat it, drink it, walk it, talk it. All that I'm telling you. Sometimes I I usually would turn my turn the word on and listen to it while I'm asleep because I feel like that's how it gets in me, get in my spirit, get in my mind and my heart. If I'm sleeping with it playing constantly, I haven't been doing it lately, but that's what I normally do. So this one, the weeds among the wheat. Jesus gave them another parable to consider, saying, "The kingdom of heaven is like a man." Who sowed good seed in his field. But while he while his men were sleeping, that, that's another scripture. That kind of my mind. While men slept, the enemy crept in. So when we go to sleep at night, 
we really supposed to be up doing them prayer watches that I keep talking about. The eight prayer watches, that's what we supposed to be up doing. Because when we go to sleep, that's when he like, all right, let's get let's get the game plan going. At two p at two AM, they getting the game plan going. The the enemy, the demons, the cohorts, the imps, the witches, the warlock, they getting their game face on. They getting their plans. They making their plans at two AM. So three AM come, they out. Creating God, chaos and, and, and running amok and doing all oh, this mess while we sleep. And then some of us wonder why we wake up in foul moods or bad attitudes or, or just for complaining and like being a grouch. Because while we slept, the enemy crept in and planted his seeds, planted his, his negative seeds, his wicked, evil seeds while we sleeping. So when we get up, you sometimes you, you start an argument with your with your wife or your husband or you snapping at your kids because he's doing all this craziness while we sleeping. That's why the word says while men slept, the enemy crept in. He crept in. We he got his foot in there. So um so it was I was real side. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while he his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed and sowed weeds resembling wheat. Now the weeds look like the wheat. <laughs> Did y'all did y'all hear that? The weed looked like the wheat. So let me go ahead and read on. Alright. Among the wheat and went away. 26. So when the plants sprouted and formed grain, the weeds appeared also. So the servants of the owner came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Then how does it have weeds in it? He replied to them, An enemy has done this. The servants asked him, Then do you want us to go and pull them out? He, but he said, Verse 29, but he said, no, because as you pull out the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them because the weeds resemble the wheat. So they, they look alike. They kind of look alike. So if they pull them out, if they pull the weeds out, they're going to take a good amount of that, that wheat out. And the wheat, if okay, so the weed in, in King James is tares in the wheat. And the tares are the sons of the enemy. The wheat are the sons of men, which is God. He's the, they're, they're the sons of God. And the tares are the sons of the enemy and the sons of the devil. So, he said, don't pull them up because if you pull up the wheat, you're going to pull up the wheat too. Let them grow. This is where, mm, come on God. This is where, and I said... The word says, come from among them and be ye separated. Come on here, God. Let them grow together until the harvest, the end of time, the end of age. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, which is the angels, I will tell the reapers, first gather the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Mm -mm -mm. Woo, boy. He said, no, let let them, he said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. I'll do the separating. That goes to say, let the, 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 the sons of the devil and the sons of God, let them grow together. But I'll do the separating. I'll pull out the sons of the enemy and, and, and tie them up and thumb to the furnace. Woo, glory to God. I felt that right there. That thing, I felt that strong in my belly. Woo-hoo, Jesus. Okay. I, I'm going to do the weeds explain and then I'll be done. I said I was going to be done after that. But I just want to read this to y'all. This is this is the parable of the wheat and the tares. But it amplified. It's talking about the weeds and the wheat. So verse 36 says, I jumped to verse 36. Um, then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, explain clearly to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Verse 37, he answered, The one who sows the good seed in the, is the Son of Man. And the field um, and the field is the world. And as far as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, and the weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are angels. Verse 40, so just as the weeds are gathered up and burnt in the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. 
Verse 41, the son of man will, see, will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all the things that offend, those things by which people are led into sin. Did you hear that? I'm going to read that again, verse, verse 40. So just as the weeds are gathered up and burnt in the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. Verse 41, the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom those tares, those sons of the devil. They will gather out, out, out of, um. I just messed up real quick, hold on. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, those things by which people are led into sin, drinking, partying, fornicating, smoking this and smoking that, and drinking this and drinking that. that, that those kind of things that lead people into sin, and all who practice evil leading others into sin. Did y'all hear that? Leading others into sin. Mm-mm-mm. And it will throw, hold on, and it will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping over sorrow and pain, and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. Verse 43, then the righteous, those who seek the will of God, will shine forth, radiating the new life, like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. So he's saying again, <laughs> hey son, <laughs> so he's saying again, those that have ears to hear, let them hear and heed what he's saying. He's saying that at the end of the, at the end of the world, at the end of the age, end of the time, that he's going to take everything, everybody that offended his kingdom, he's going to take them out and throw them into the furnace. He's gonna get. He's gonna separate them from those that 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 do the will of God, that follow after Christ. He's gonna separate them. That's why that keeps coming to my mind. The uh, be come from among them and be separated. If you with somebody around somebody, hang with somebody that don't want to do the will of God, that don't want to follow God's will, His word, His way for their life. Come from among them and be separated. He says that in his word. He said that right there. He said, I'll do the separating. Let me do it. You don't do it because you're going you're gonna to take some good with the bad. And they're, they're going to go in the fiery furnace because you pulled them up and, and didn't, wasn't careful enough, didn't know how to separate them. Let me do it. Let, let me handle that. I can do it. And I'll do it just right. So, y'all... Woo! Jesus, I, I hope y'all got something tonight. I hope I made sense to you. I hope something I said blessed you, touched your heart, pricked your heart, con convicted you. I mean, because, honey, I'm get I got convicted my own, so I can't even get the words out of my mouth. I got convicted of some things myself. Like I said, when I come on here, it's not just for y'all. It's for me. I, I have to be the first partaker. It's not just for y'all. I got to take it too. I'm not excluded, nor am I exempt. And I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to tip around on eggshells. But I'm going to give it to you straight up with no chaser. I, that's, what, that's, the, that's the thing that come out my mouth. I'm going to give it to you straight up with no chaser. And y'all know what that means. So, um, whoo, Jesus, good God Almighty. Mm -mm -mm. I told you I was tired when I, when I, before I came over here, I, I took me a little, and I do me a little cat nap. It was a little cat nap because before I know it, I checked my phone. I said, oh Lord, let me get up and set up my little, my little area so I can do what I got to do. I, I, I thank God I did get this little stand because I, I like it. I can turn it around and mess with it and fool with it and just leave it right there. Instead of having my ring like so close to my face so that I can see what's going on. Cause y'all know country lady can't see that good when I these glasses. And y'all know it's getting past my bedtime because I'm starting to get silly. Uh, not starting. I am, I am on the silly side right now. But I, I'm just hoping and praying that y'all got something from what I said. Because I know I got something. It, it was good. Sorry, y'all. Especially the the I I really like these parables. I'm telling you, when you know what you read, when you understand what you read, when you understand what you got to do, 
and how you got to break this word down so that you can get it, so that you can understand. You Even if you got to read different versions, it's fine. That's how you get to understand it. I got a message version over there. I got a new King James version in my book bag. I got a King James version here, another King James version there. I think that's another King James version. So I got about one, two, three, four, five, five Bibles, well, maybe six, six Bibles in here. So, um, but I, I really like, and then I used to amplify on the, on my phone. So I really like trying to dissect this word, take, take it apart. You know, you know how engineers, they like to take stuff apart or build stuff up. But I like to dissect this word and break it down. Now that I was taught how to do that, you know, cause I could read it. Or if, if I, before my sis taught me how to do that, what I would do is what I call chasing the scriptures. It has little, it has the scriptures at the end of each scripture. Not all of them have it, but majority of them have the scriptures at the end of that main scripture you read. And that's how I, that's how I start chasing it. That's how I started learning how to understand was to re, keep reading on to understand what that main scripture, that base scripture said to me. And that's what you had to do. You have to, what is it saying to you? What is God saying to you through the scripture? And that's how we, that's how we have to do it and how we have to read. Or you do it how, it, whatever works for you, that's what you have to do. Um, reading different versions or chasing the scriptures or like she taught me how to highlight what stands out to me, what God is saying to me specifically. It might be a word, it may be a sentence, it may be a group of words, it may be the whole scripture. And you just realize, uh, meditate and understand what it is that God is saying. And even after we finish reading his word, or when we finish praying, we have to sit still. And that's, a, I'm going to tell you all now, I'm not going to lie, that's the thing that I struggle with. I can pray, I can pray all day. I can pray unto God and cry out and, you know, worship and praise. But when it comes time to the sitting still and quiet, that's where I struggle. I believe that's where the uh, enemy fights me at. I, I try to sit there to listen to what God is saying after I didn't say what I need to say or pray. I have the I have a trouble with I have trouble with sitting still to listen to what he's saying. I, I'm just being one thousand percent honest right there. I so, and I'll sit. I tried it one day. I was telling my sister in Christ. I said I tried it. I prayed and I tried to sit there and listen. And honey, next thing I know, I was falling asleep. Next thing I know, I was on my couch gone because I was trying to sit there. I said, Lord, I'm trying. It was hard. I was fighting. I was trying to just sit there and listen. But I just for some reason. I grew tired and sleepy just like that. I was I was so sleepy. I don't even really take naps like that. But when I was trying to do it that day, I sat home. I stayed home because I was sick. And that could have been it too. I don't know. But I was sick. And I was trying to, you know, pray and hear from the Lord. And it was just not working. I, I just, I struggled with that. that. That's one of the things that I struggle with. And I'm just going to be 1,000% honest. And it ain't just started. It's been that way for me um, to sit there and listen. And then I'm going to just be honest too right here and be just real. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. I don't like to sit in quiet. I ain't going to lie. I, I could watch TV 24-7. I don't like to sit in quiet. But how am I going to hear from God if I don't sit in quiet? If I don't sit still? And if I don't spend time in a quiet, you know, quiet time with God. How am I going to hear from, I mean, I, I hear God, but like I said, to really sit still and to hear from him at the autumn, prayed and poured my heart out and, I, and I'll get up and go do something else instead of sitting there. That's the thing I need God to deal with me on, to, to really deal with me on, to help me on, to lead God and direct me, you know, truthful, I'm telling you, it's just, I, I struggle with that. I'm not going to lie. I got to be real. I struggle with that big time. So that's that's a prayer that I really need to really keep before God to keep me, to help me to sit still so that I can hear from him. I don't have a, I don't have a problem with getting in presence, but I don't sit still so that I can hear from you. 
hear what he's saying to me. You know, um, that's that's just something. That's a prayer I got to pray. I got to take that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I got to take that before Him. That I really need help to to sit there and to hear what thus saith the Lord. Because if if I keep that to myself, I ain't doing nobody uh, this service but me. I've said something to other people though. But that's something that I really and he I he got things he wanna say, but I don't sit still long enough for him to say it. I'll pray and I'll go do something else. Like immediately I get I get distracted and go do something else. Or I'll turn that TV on and a bad thing is jump on this phone. And if I can I said that's another reason why I jumped off Facebook before. I said to him, I said to myself, if you could sit here and be scrolling on Facebook for hours, why can't you spend hours with God? Why can't you spend hours in the Word of God? Why can't you take that time you scrolling on Facebook all day long and give it to God? Why can't I do that? Because I, I let this phone and I get in this phone or I get in that TV or I'll do something before I know it, I'm asleep. So this is, these are things, by talking to y'all tonight, these are things that I got to take before God. And I got to be intentional on hearing Him, on sitting still and being quiet and listening for Him, talking to me and telling me what He wants me to know. This is where my intentional comes in at. I got to be intentional about being consistent, doing things consistently, um, like these Facebook lives, my wisdom app, get back to writing my book. See, this is, I said, I have to be intentional on being consistent. I got to be intentional about being consistent. And I, I, once I can master that, master that, then, you know, uh, this, you know, then I can go into something else, but being intentional about when I finish praying to sit there and listen for what does say the Lord intentional is the word for me the this the rest of this year that word and for however long that's gonna be me that's my word i believe that's my word that the lord has given me be intentional be intentional about seeking his face be intentional about being in his presence be intentional about being in his word be intentional and consistent about in his word getting in his word and his word getting in me this is the thing see we got to be real honest with ourselves and i i used to i used to was honest with my own self let alone with other people so I, i'm learning to do that too as well to be honest and with myself to be honest with myself because god already know me he already know me and he wants me to come to him with things he know everything about me he know everything about you he he know it he just wants us to come to him and he want to hear it from us like how your parents like no i want to hear from you i don't want to hear from nobody else like you said i want to hear straight from the source I don't want to hear he said and she told me and she said. No, I want to hear directly from your mouth. And that's what I, I that's okay, God. Mm, thank you, Jesus. That's what I got to work on. That's that's my homework assignment for myself. Be intentional about the things of God. Be intentional about the heart of God. Be intentional about God, period. Be intentional about getting in his word, reading his word, digesting his word, meditating, eating it, drinking, sleeping, walking, talking it. Like like she said Sunday, Prophetess Becky preached, she preached something up, boy, she preached it. Like she said, when you truly let God be revealing your life, then that's when the signs, miracles, and wonders will begin to happen. Doors will begin to open for you when you re when you truly let God be revealed in you. When you let Him be revealed in you and in your life, that's when He'll begin to do signs, miracles, and wonders. Open doors that no man can shut. Shut doors that no man can open. He'll padlock that door. He'll padlock it. He'll put a uh, uh, what you a boulder in front of it. He'll make sure they can't open them doors no more. And that's the place we gotta get to. That's the place I gotta get to. I can't speak for y'all. I don't know where your walk is. Um. I, I don't know which how you walking and and what your walk is with God, but um, 
Alright, sis. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, pray for me too, why yeah. <laughs> you you heard me say I got be intentional. Pray for me while you at it. <laughs> pray for me, I pray for you. That's what we gotta do for each other. But I'ma get off of here. I love y'all to life beyond eternity, my kings and queens. Peculiar peculiar people, you know, uh, 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 a royal priesthood we are in God. I pray y'all have a blessed rest of your night, uh, sleep, sweet sleep, peaceful rest, and a, a blessed and happy day tomorrow and the rest of the week. I love y'all. Until next time, country girl, country, not country girl, country lady, EMJ is out. Y'all know me. I love y'all. Good night.